This is 3FM. I think the important thing that people need is if the government is going to make a decision to stick with it, you'd need to go out and consult properly with people, not, a, not these half-baked ideas they have at the moment where they seem to put out a consultation and then completely ignore the responses, the Laxey Bridge being a very good example of that. If you're going to consult with people, make a decision, and then stick with it, and then accept the consequences of your decision. I think a lot of the time politicians make a decision, realise it wasn't very popular, even though it may have been the right choice, and then they go back on it. If they're going to make a decision, they have to have the courage to stick with their convictions. Sort of on the economic side, I think they've done a very good job. Uh, we've had still another five years of economic growth. They've done quite a good job marketing the island internationally. Uh, when you look at locally, I think they've done uh, a lot worse. There have been a lot of uh, U-turns, a lot of decisions they've made, and then had to revisit uh, some of the way they've gone about making some decisions has not been the most open and transparent. Some of the things they've done have been quite questionable. Uh, the sale of the nunnery, the bailout of the Sefton Group, whether they had the, the, the heart in the right place, yes. Uh, whether they were the right decisions, personally, I, I'd say no. I think broadly, yes, the business sector does have confidence in the government. Like I said earlier, it's, uh, the government has done a good job with the sort of protecting and growing the economy. Although, having said that, it is my firm belief that it is not government's job to grow the economy. Government's job is to make sure the environment is right and get out of the way and let private businesses get out there, generate wealth and create jobs. And we've seen that over the past five years, and I'd like to see that carry on. And the best way of doing that, like I said, is for government just to get out of the way. Housing is a, is a complex issue. If you're talking about the public sector housing, uh, we need to make housing in the public sector sustainable, which does mean rent increases, which is what's happened over the past five years. What they've missed out on is protecting those people who can't afford to pay the increased rents. The key thing there is means testing. And means testing should enable them to turn around and say, look, we have to make housing sustainable. We have to put the rents up to a sustainable level to make sure we can cover all the costs. When you do that, that's fine, we accept this, but then there are always going to be people who are in public sector housing who cannot afford those rent increases. They need to be protected, and the only way of doing that is to, to means test and to turn around and say, these people need extra help, and we're going to make sure they get it. When you're talking about the private sector, they need to have a serious look at the first-time buyer scheme. It isn't working the way it was intended to work. I know a lot of people who are struggling to get on the first-time buyer's ladder, and that is a serious problem. Part of the issue could be we need to build more housing, we need more investment in our housing. We definitely need more investment in our public sector housing, and that's something I definitely would like to see happen over the next five years. Spending is definitely out of control inside the health service, and it all boils down to having serious structural problems. They have problems recruiting staff, they have problems retaining staff, which is why they went so much over budget last year. They've admitted it themselves, they've had to spend an excess of over £10 million, because, primarily because of recruiting agency staff. Now they need to sort out their recruitment issues, and the only way to do that is to sit down with the staff and say, look, what's wrong? What is it that is causing you guys not to stay? What is it that's causing us the problems? These are the people that are working in the health service, they're the people they need to be talking to. I think the important thing is that politicians are communicating with the electorate. It doesn't matter how they do it. If they decide to put out newsletters, if they're on social media, if they're going around door to door, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for them, whatever works for their constituents. For me, being on social media just gives people another avenue to contact me. You know, if you want to call, if you want to text, if you want to send me a tweet or a Facebook message, it's just about being accessible. And I think in this modern day and age, people expect you to, to be accessible sort of via as many different mediums as possible. The biggest thing that I'm that I know that I could bring to the table is I'm not afraid to make a decision and stick with it. And I think that's the biggest problem that the last administration have had, is they're too often have they decided to push things down the line, to deal with it later, to deal with this tomorrow, and I don't think we can do that. I don't think we can do that anymore. We have big issues like pensions that need to be dealt with now. They need to be dealt with firmly. It's not going to be popular, but it has to be done, and that's something that I'm not afraid to do. More music for the Isle of Man. 3FM.